everybody this is Dr. Maples we're gonna pick up on our next lecture series and we're gonna take this idea of hypotheses from our previous lecture and now we're gonna start thinking about measurement we're gonna start putting our hypotheses into practice and learn to measure things called variables Ooh, it's exciting stuff some of you may feel uh, familiar with this from the 232 class others may not remember it that's okay because we're gonna teach it from the ground up and I guarantee at the end of this you'll feel perfectly comfortable with it likewise we'll bring these ideas up again when we start working with secondary data and also quantitative data later in the semester now a quick reminder in this last lecture we talked about hypotheses hypotheses are a central part of our semester we're gonna make sure that at the end of the semester you are a pro at writing a great hypothesis a good example of a hypothesis, remember, is the idea that um, I hypothesize that with states with higher average household incomes will have higher rates of medical insurance coverage compared to those states with lower average incomes. I hypothesize, I make a statement of fact, and I kind of give the counter to that statement of fact, um, and we're done. It's a good hypothesis. But to be good at hypotheses, we need to add a few more ideas. Um, particularly, we need to think about how we're going to measure those things. Now, to deal with measurements, we really need to talk about variables. Variables is a term that you've heard me use loosely a few times, and I haven't really explored what I mean by it. So let's do that now. A variable is a measure which can vary from case to case. A simple example of this. I could do a quick survey, um, and I could find out the age of everyone in this class. That could be a variable. I could find the uh, years of education, uh, the county of birth, I could find um, your um, uh, home family status. I could find um, the county that you currently live in. I could get your favorite soda, your class hours, um, what type of car you own, those of you who have parking permits and those who don't. I could collect a whole bunch of information. And that would be a good example of variables. Each of these will vary from case to case. The simple idea is that a variable is something that's like a trait that varies from person to person to person. Some people will have the same answer. More than one of you will be 18, 19, or 20, or 21. Uh, and then some of you may have a unique age, 23. Who knows? But with variables, they vary from case to case. Now, variables are really cool for sociologists because they do a couple of things for us. They can measure reality, things that have happened, um, will happen in the future. Um, so, for example, um, how many times did you ride a particular roller coaster? That's a statement of fact. You rode it 15 times. Okay, well, I've measured the reality of how often you use that roller coaster. But I can also measure emotions with a variable. Which roller coaster um, park is your, uh, sorry, which roller coaster at the park was your favorite? So I could now find out um, sort of your emotional preference for things. I could even ask it in a way too that lets you rank it, like on a scale of one to 10, um, how excited are you about roller coaster X? So this gives us a chance to measure it. Again, variables are something that we'll work with a lot this semester. So this is your introduction to them, and you'll get comfortable as we work with them more this semester. Let's dig in. All right, now, this is an important conversation we're about to have. Whenever we create variables, we have to make sure that we're clear about what we're talking about. Um, First and foremost, you need to remember that when you're doing a study, you pretty much get to set your variables up as you see fit within reason. But one important process that you go through is the process of explaining what you mean by a variable and also taking a moment to say how you're going to measure a variable. Now, the terms for this are conceptualize and operationalize. Conceptualize means that you're defining the concept. You're defining what you mean by a particular variable. You see how it has concept in it? Conceptualize is to define the concept that you are <laughs> measuring. Now, when we operationalize, we're telling us how we're going to measure it. We're going to measure it by doing a particular thing. We're going to specify it. Let's give a good example of this. Let's say that we want to make a variable called favorite roller coaster. And I could conceptualize in my paper the, the um, va variable favorite coaster by saying by favorite, I mean the roller coaster that one gravitates toward compared to other coasters in the park. That's an OK definition. That'll work for favorite roller coaster. If we wanted to operationalize that, then we've got to find a way to measure that. I operationalize favorite coaster as being the name of the actual coaster that is your favorite. So that's saying how I'm going to measure it. 
A way to think about this is that with data, we often are putting it into data sets like um, in Excel. And conceptualize is something that tells us what the variable means. Um, but then when we operationalize it, that's the figure that we're actually putting into the data set. I think that's something that helps some students think about this. But let's give some other examples of this. Let's explore how we might do this in different ways. Now let's take these same variables and let's measure them a different way so that we can see that you can actually be the person who decides how you're going to measure the variables that you use in your study. Let's use the same variable favorite roller coaster again. Now let's conceptualize this. Let's say that by favorite roller coaster, I mean one's preferred roller coaster amongst all the coasters that have ever been made. So as that previous one was kind of maybe narrowed down to within a park, now we're saying favorite coaster can be every coaster that ever existed. Um, it really widens things out, right? And so we can say now that we're going to operationalize that as being, uh, or explain how we're going to measure it, we're going to say that our operationalized favorite coaster is being the number of times one rode their favorite coaster this year. So we have this cool way of measuring that. Again, notice that we can take the same ideas and measure them a little differently, and that's okay. There are limits to that. In fact, let's explore the limits of that. Um, it's up to you in the end how you choose to measure things. Often we will measure things as other scientists have measured them because that's good science in many ways. But sometimes we need to create our new variables uh, for the that haven't been used before and we have to study these ideas and that's okay too. Um, now when we're creating variables we want to make sure that they make sense based on how we define them and how we measure them. And let me give you a good example of a bad example. Notice that it says wrong example beside it because this lets you know that this is a bad example. So let's pretend that I'm doing an environmental sociology study and I'm creating a variable on feelings about the climate, um, more specifically feelings about climate change. Okay, so um, I'm gonna measure this uh, variable uh, feelings about climate change as the number of miles driven per year uh, maybe in a car. So we define um, feelings about climate change somehow. As, you know, we'll conceptualize that however we saw fit, but we're measuring it as the number of miles driven per year. Do you see how maybe those two ideas don't link up really well? So we're saying on one end that um, feelings about climate change um, is something that can be measured by the number of miles driven per year. Maybe there's an argument there, but you know, a lot of people don't drive. A lot of people actually, you know, would ride buses, which would actually be even more efficient. Or maybe you walk everywhere, and so that would be a good thing. Or maybe your job makes you drive around a lot, but it's a very efficient car. We can see how there's some some problems here. Um, likewise, what if I was doing a variable called cheerfulness, um, and I decided to measure it based on the number of times that you greeted someone on the day of the survey? There's lots of reasons that you might or might not have greeted someone. Um, and likewise, too, you know, what if you get um, people who are wallflowers who don't talk to anyone versus you happen to get a Walmart greeter in there who takes your survey and they say, oh, I've greeted 300 people. Oh, congratulations. You're the most cheerful person on the planet. No, that's not a good measure. Do you see where these are kind of some problems? You know, we want to make sure that what we're trying to measure is what we really are measuring. Let's kind of flesh these issues out by looking at some ideas we call reliability and validity. Now, first off, when you create a variable, it's up to you. You define it how you're going to define it. You measure it how you're going to measure it. Other people are welcome to critique that, certainly, because it's science. But there's some obvious limits to it, and part of that is reliability. Now, would we get the exact same results, more or less, every time we measure with this variable? Let's go back to our cheerfulness one uh, and the number of greetings. So is your cheerfulness truly going to be measured by the number of times you greet people? Um, and would that change from day to day? Well, for example, I would probably be a very uncheerful person right now because I'm not greeting anyone because uh, we're right now in the quarantine while I'm recording this video, and I see the same two other people every day. And, um, you know, I don't think that I'm not a cheerful person, but the variable probably is going to get a bad measure from what it would be now versus, say, in six months where maybe the quarantine's over and I'm greeting people on a regular basis and seeing people in the hallways and stuff like that. So we want to make sure that we have a reliable measure. But the idea here is that um, in measuring this, we're going to get the same measure more or less every time. Um, what might be a better way to measure cheerfulness would be something that would be more consistent than asking the number of times you've greeted someone that day. Um, like, 
um, on a scale of one to five, do you overall feel cheery most of the time? You know, five would be I strongly agree. One would be I strongly disagree. That might be more effective. Validity is another one, too, because we want to make sure we're actually measuring what we propose we're measuring. Let's go back to our car example where we're interested in climate change and measuring um, your support of climate change by the number of miles that you drive in your car. Is car mileage really indicative of what we're trying to measure there? I mean, there's an argument that it could be linked, but it's probably not. In fact, we could do something like what we call a Likert item where people strongly agree to strongly disagree with statements about climate change, and that might be far more effective. Um, you might give them a statement like, I feel climate change is a real problem. Do you strongly agree? Uh, strongly, uh, sorry, do you strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, or strongly agree with that statement? That would probably be a more valid measurement of what you're trying to get at. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us talking about some basic ideas. Remember here, we're talking about with variables. Variables are things that can vary from case to case. And we're also talking about a couple of basic ideas. We're talking about conceptualization, operationalization. Conceptualization, we define the concept that we're trying to measure. Operationalize, we say how we're going to measure it, often giving us a good quantitative or qualitative example of that. Likewise, we talked about reliability and validity. With reliability, we want to make sure if I ask you on a Tuesday, I get that same answer more or less on Friday. If I get the same answer, then I probably have a pretty reliable measure. If I don't, there might be a problem. With validity, we also want to make sure that I'm measuring what I actually think I'm measuring. Again, these are all basic concepts. We'll have plenty of time to practice with these across the semester, so don't feel nervous with them. If you do have questions, you feel free to contact me. Likewise, you'll get a chance to play with these in one of our upcoming assignments. All right, I'll see you in our next lecture where we'll talk more about levels of measurement. See you there.